Hi guys, it's Chantelle from An Intentional Life and today I have my husband here for a homeschool Q&A video. I have kind of made him agree to a couple of Q&As here. We're going to do this homeschool one and a foster care one and then we will see where we go from there. So I got a number of questions about homeschooling from Instagram and we're going to try to answer some of them. So the very first question that I got is, how is unschooling going? Now, a few months ago, it was, we officially switched to unschooling. And do you remember the conversation when I asked you if it would be okay if we switched? Do you remember what you said? Didn't I say that's pretty much what we're doing? That's what you thought we were doing, yeah, yeah. when I described it. So we did switch to unschooling, and how is it going? I think it's going great. Yeah, um, I think so. So many people worry that unschoolers won't know anything. Like, they think it means we're not teaching our kids and that's not what it means. What unschooling means is that we pretty much take our kids' interests and not even just our kids' interests, also ours, and we run with them and we learn about them through the things that are interesting us at the time. And the other day we were having supper and I said, like, I wish people could see our kids all day long like we do because so often they surprise me with what they know so many things they know because, not because we've taught them, but because they listen to books yeah. or they've heard about it somewhere or they've watched it somewhere. Um, and so as unschoolers, I feel like our job is to provide them with resources and learn alongside them. And that's kind of what we do. Yeah. I feel like a lot of it is just learning in daily life. Like if they have a question about something random, we'll just either answer it or look it up at how to do it or what it means or what it is or we'll make them figure it out or help them figure it out yeah on their own so Ephraim was helping me change car tires the other day and so we learned about levers we learned about uh, combustion engines like just and it wasn't like uh <laughs> this is what we're going to learn today it was just he asked those questions so that's what we learned about right yeah and that's I don't know I like that that seems to suit our personality as well well they're they have they know a lot more than I feel like I did when I was their age. So. More diversity, well, and just more in general, yes. Yeah. Another question I often get is, what if your husband isn't on board with homeschooling? And I don't know if I should first say how I actually answer that, um, but for the first, the first year that our daughter was in school, I wanted to homeschool and you didn't. Yeah. So what made you come on board? I don't know. You gave me a lot of information about it. Bombarded me with information. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and I'm the type of person that likes to do research before jumping into anything. Like a lot of research. Too much um, research. <laughs> so, I mean, that probably helped a lot. And, I mean, she wasn't doing... Like, she was doing fine academically in school, but right. it was causing issues emotionally and just with, yeah, other things. Um, so that played into it as well but a lot of it was just like just learning getting past the the misconceptions around homeschooling that you know all homeschoolers are socially awkward weirdos just some of us are <laughs> we're socially awkward weirdos and we weren't homeschooled yeah. so there's that yeah um uh, how much did knowing how she was doing in kindergarten where she was academically to where a lot of her peers were did that affect things like yeah well it's frustrating to see her like spend half her time or more just coloring or doing nothing really educational in school like, no nothing wrong with coloring and stuff especially in kindergarten it's fine but i think she was bored yeah she was when she knew her alphabet going into kindergarten and she, she could read in kindergarten yeah and other kids by the time they were done kindergarten, we're still struggling to identify some letters. So yes. it's a lot, yeah, it's difficult then to really find value in sending her to school when she isn't really learning a whole lot, I guess. Yeah, the school wasn't what she, she didn't really learn academically that much that year. She had fun, she enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, she had fun, yeah. But it wasn't like, it wasn't anything that we couldn't have taught her or didn't already teach her. Um, what I do tell people is if their husband isn't on board with homeschooling, like don't go, don't go ahead with it though, because you need both of you to be yeah. on the same page. 
even if you as the mother is doing most of the homeschooling, he still has to be on board. Otherwise, it's just gonna cause friction that you know you don't want there. But I don't know, bombard, bombard them with tons of information if they are researchers. Oh, and it might just work. And pray about it. Like, yeah. like prayerfully consider and listen to his concerns as to why he, why he doesn't want to homeschool. And if he thinks it's just because you're going to have socially awkward, weird children, then maybe find some homeschoolers around you that don't fit that profile. Um, so not us. And I'm just kidding. Our kids are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we're the weirdos. We're the weirdos. Um, yeah, and so I don't know. Just maybe try to help educate him and get rid of some of those misconce misconceptions he might have. What is your favorite part of homeschooling? Is our next question. What's your favorite part? Um, I think even though I, I work usually away from the home, not right now, but um, just seeing them learn and finding out what they're learning about. And yeah, it's, it's never like a stressful thing school like it, it is yeah. it's just interesting to see them excited about learning some about some random topic that i might not have even heard of or thought about or yeah so it's just cool to see them excited about learning yeah um, my favorite part is not having to listen to the schools and fill out <laughs> forms and uh, the one year in kindergarten i felt like i was constantly filling out forms doing homework with them after school and you know trying to get them different supplies for different things they had going on in their classroom. I felt busier as a school parent than I do as a homeschool parent in many ways. And it was busy in things that I didn't want to be busy in. So that's just my rebel personality where I don't want to do the things people tell me I should do. Yeah. But, and, and all the things that you said too. <laughs> but like, that's a definite Mostly bonus. just not listening to people. Mostly yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I get a lot of questions about following our provincial local curriculum. Now, in our province, we do not need to follow the curriculum, and we don't. But I do know some places, I don't know if it's in Canada at all that you have to follow the curriculum, but in some states, I know you have to. So that will obviously be different for your uh, where you live. But for here, you don't need to follow the curriculum. I do look at it because I don't know, maybe just to see what kids are supposed to be learning now. Yeah. But a curriculum was made so that kids could go from school to school and kind of just, you know, integrate into that. It wasn't made for how to follow kids' interests or to really benefit kids. It was mostly made to benefit teachers and make things streamlined. So, I don't know. I don't really see the value in curriculum as a homeschooler, so we don't follow it. Someone wanted to know how we manage with extracurricular activities like foreign language, sports, arts, etc. Well, during this time, we don't do any of it. I think that we have the opinion that most kids are involved in too many extracurricular activities. Um, and so we haven't really had, in the past, had issues or, or trouble getting them involved in enough activities. They've been in town sports, they've done swimming lessons, they've done activities that they would have never, probably not have exposure to had they gone to school, like fencing. Homeschool fencing, yeah. Um, so, yeah, not concerned at all about extracurriculars. More the problem for us is feeling like we've overcommitted ourselves sometimes. Yeah. Like wishing, oh, we wish we wouldn't have signed them up for this or that. And I think we're learning. Uh, our kids have done piano lessons and ballet yeah. and soccer and baseball and swimming and probably other things that I forget. Um, we are more of a DIY personality where foreign language, um, currently we use different apps for that because we don't know any foreign languages ourselves. And sports, we do sign up for town sports usually. We actually weren't even going to this year before no. everything happened and there was no town sports this summer um, but there's benefits and there's also negatives and this year we decided not to do that and art all of our art learning has been online we use YouTube yeah. pretty much YouTube and then a couple different like drawing books and stuff 
So that's how we manage that. The next question is how do we make individual Bible reading kind of like part of our kids' day? And this is the first year that we've done that. Yeah. Yeah, so our daughter is doing, we're both going through the Read Scripture app, which is a... Us plus her. Yeah, us plus... We, we yeah. can add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, so we're going through <laughs> uh, using the Read Scripture app, which is just uh, it's, it's basically the Bible in a year. Um, and then it gives some resources, um, some really helpful videos for um, pretty much every chapter and sometimes more than one per chapter that help explain things. So they're great for... Every book. Every Sorry, every not, book, not, not every chapter. chapter. Um, they're great for for us to, to understand more and also yes. for our daughter to understand more of what she's reading, especially in some of the Old Testament books, which can be a little more challenging to, to go through. So that's what we've been doing this year, for her at least. Yeah, and well, and it started out because a friend of hers, <laughs> like full disclosure here, a friend of hers was going to get paid $100 from her grandma if she read through the Bible in a year. And then she heard about that and she's like, ooh, will you pay me to do that? And I was like, well, at nine years old, there's no way I would have read through the Bible at nine. Yeah. But last year was my first year reading through the Bible, like actually finishing all the way through. So I'm like, yeah, $100 is worth that to me to get her to read the Bible. So there is that at the end of the tunnel. I don't even know if she thinks about it now though. I've never heard her mention that for like at least in the last couple months. So I don't think that's really her big motivation at this point. Not anymore, but we're, so we're five months in and she is still on track. Um, one thing we have been doing is sometimes she has read the message during some of the harder books, like the minor prophets, she was reading through the message and stuff yeah. to make it you know, a little bit more kid-friendly. Kid um, and then for Ephraim, he has been reading through a children's Bible. So he pretty much just started reading this year. So we're doing the beginner's Bible, which just has short stories that he's reading through. And how do we make it a part of our day? We just kind of ask them on multiple times, I guess, if they've actually completed it. This we have to do with him, so we know if he's done it or not. Mm -hmm. And then we just check in with Reka. And sometimes she'll forget. And she will just do however many days she'll catch up. Yeah. And for him, he just continues on. So this year, they are seven and nine. And this is their first time doing this. This is our first time like trying to motivate them to do it. Yeah. I never thought about doing it, to, like getting them to do it at such a young age. No. But it's working and yes. it's, I think it's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, another question we had is homeschooling during foster care placements, like kids coming and kids going and how we manage the chaos of that, that throwing off routine. Um, I, I think because of going more on the un unschooling side of things, it doesn't really affect things that much um, because everything, every part of life becomes school in a sense yeah. where you're always learning something no matter what you're, you're doing. So I don't know. Yeah, so when a new kid comes in, we're learning that new kid and their routines and the kids are learning a new age range that they've never experienced before. And um, at like the more schooly stuff, maybe gets put off a bit that we do, I often allow more screens, like the first week that we have a new placement, yeah. there's, there's more crying, there's figuring out routines. Um, so we're very flexible when it comes to that and that helps. We're not trying to sit down at the table at nine o'clock every day and do three hours of book, uh, book work. So. But we were never doing that no. anyway. So No, I know. So that's, I think our style, homeschool style works for that. Yeah, it works well with changing Routine because we don't have that many set like hard and fast routines that we always do, and definitely not a time that they do them. No, like I have a list of things I would like the kids to do in the morning. Yeah, it doesn't always get done in the morning, and it doesn't get done every day. But it's kind of like our loose goal. Yeah, the ideal. But it's all pretty flexible. Yeah. So on that topic, with us not requiring a lot of book work. Um, people were wondering how our kids feel or how how they act when we ask them to do something. Now, because we don't require a lot of book work doesn't mean we don't ask our kids to do things they don't want to do. They, they help out around the house. They have regular chores as well as like just things we ask them to do. 
So do they revolt? Sometimes. Yeah, probably about as much as most kids would, I would imagine. Yeah, like they still do things they don't want to do. Like they take turns doing the dishwasher and uh, just all sorts of random things around the house. And sometimes they do it willingly and sometimes not so much. Mm -hmm. But just because we unschool and don't ask them to sit down and do stuff doesn't mean they don't have opportunities to do things they don't like. Even that, they do, I try to get the kids to write out a verse or part of the Bible every day. And one of our children is not as fond of it as the other one. And it is a struggle, but it's also something where I can see the benefits and I know why I'm asking them to do this. So it's worth pushing through that. Um, I got a couple questions about how I plan our year and how I keep track of what we do. So I do have different printables. I have a vision planner that I made last year that I've updated this year that I can leave linked. And how do we track it? Well, this year I was terrible at that and now I'm regretting it. But um, I do have a printable for that as well. Um, I have a couple different ones, but there's one that I really like where at the end of the week or throughout the week, I kind of just think about what the kids have learned about how that would fit into a school subject and put it on my paper. And that helps me for my year end reporting. If it wasn't for the reporting, I wouldn't keep track. Do we foresee any future concerns with homeschooling or unschooling even? Um, not really. I mean, it depends, I guess, how things go in the future. You never know what, how things change, rules and regulations and all that kind of stuff. It also depends on what the kids become interested in as they get older, mm -hmm. whether or not that's something that we can find resources for ourselves or uh, what they might be interested in. If they're interested in post-secondary, if they might need some additional, like it, it depends. Um, I'm not concerned right now. Yeah. My only concern is that we are raising children who think about things instead of just going with the flow. So we are both educated beyond high school. And it's kind of, I know in society these days, it's something you just do. But we are raising children who question things and ask, like, is that something that we want to do? Is that something we need? Like, so it's not, it's not a negative concern. No. <laughs> but we are definitely raising them differently. And I think in a positive way. Yeah. Um, when people find out that I have my teaching degree and was a teacher before homeschooling, they often say, oh, well, that's why you can homeschool or that's why it's easy for you or whatever. And um, my teaching degree helped me absolutely nothing in teaching or in homeschooling. Pretty much it was a lot of psychology and stuff like that. I don't know. There's nothing that I learned in university that I use in our homeschool. Other than it taught me to question the system and realize how broken the system is. So probably nothing they would consider as positive. <laughs> and the last question. How do we make sure our kids are having enough socialization? That like everyone wants to know about the socialization. Nobody's socializing right now. Nobody's socializing right now. I'll, I'm curious to see how this pandemic, how people think about so socialization afterwards. I think our kids have really good relationships with each other, which we don't often see from other sibling groups that are uh, in school. They don't, especially, you know, our kids are about as different as you can get in almost every way. Yes. Um, and they play together a ton. Yeah, they fight some, but they also play together really well and have a lot of fun together. And they learn how to work with people who are very different than themselves. Yeah. They also are better, I think, at socializing with people that are outside of their peer group. So being able to talk to an adult uh, is a skill that yeah. a lot of kids don't learn for a long time. Yeah. Um, and they're, I feel like our kids are getting pretty decent at it. They can have a conversation with, <laughs> with an adult. Yeah. Um, and we are, I mean, we have been, they've been involved in all kinds of activities 
even prior like to, to ch this. church activities yeah. and like on a normal in normal life they see friends multiple times a week yeah. we have lots of friends that are homeschooled that live right by us they often will spend an afternoon with friends while all the other kids are in school so while kids are sitting in their desks being told to be quiet and listen to the teacher our kids are playing with friends um, I also struggle with the whole idea that like kids your same age are the way to learn to be socialized like we have a seven-year-old son and a nine-year-old daughter and I don't think seven-year-old boys or preteen girls are the, the standard of socialization <laughs> like that's not what I want them to be attaining to so us teaching them how to socialize with a variety of different people is I think more beneficial than being in a school setting and I always come back to like my kindergarten report card said Chantel talks too much so obviously you're not supposed to be socializing in school and you get in trouble for it so it's not necessarily the best place for that okay so that was most of the questions that we got I kind of have to cut a few out because of the timing um, we will maybe do another one of these in the future if you have more questions you can leave them here or send them to me on Instagram or something in the future we yeah like I said before we are going to do a foster care question and answer we aren't pros at it by any means <laughs> not even close but yeah we'll do that and so let us know if you have any questions thanks for watching guys